So welcome everyone to the first uh, or second ever uh, Romanian workshop. So I tried most of the slides to put them bilingual, so both in English and Romanian. So today we're gonna do uh, a Romanian workshop, so Atelier de Limba Romana. And during this workshop, we're gonna talk a little bit about what Romanian is and where you can find it. And then the main part of this training is gonna be for you to learn how to read Romanian. So hopefully by the end of this training, you'll be able to read it fluently and also learn some tongue twisters in it. And then we'll also go a little bit through some linguistics problems involving Romanian and some interesting features that Romanian has. So before I go to my next slide, I assume everyone knows what language family Romanian is part of. Oh, it is indeed Romance. So Romanian is here. Uh, nevertheless, it's quite different from all the other uh, Latin or Romance languages that you know of right now. So we have Portuguese in the whole other side of the graph, together with Galician and Spanish. And then we have Catalan and French and Italian, and all of them are on this Italo-Western uh, side of the Romance languages, but Romanian is all on the Eastern side, uh, together with a Romanian and Dalmatian. So it is basically a Romance language, language. nevertheless it had a lot of influences during the past years uh, from Slavic countries, from Turkish, from France, from Greek. So right now it's a big, big mix and mass of words from all these languages. And that's why we have the superpower of being able, we, of Romanians being able to understand most of the other uh, Romance languages. So French, Spanish, and Italian are quite easy to understand for us. Portuguese is a bit weird. Uh, nevertheless, it doesn't work the other way around. So it's pretty hard for all these people to understand Romanian, either spoken or written because we have a lot of words from Russian and Turkish mostly. So I'm not gonna go very much into this because the next workshop you're gonna do with Vali, uh, she's gonna go more into, into more detail about this matter. But yes, and then we're gonna talk about dialects. So this is where Romanian is spoken. This little country that is shaped like a fish is Romania. And then of course, most of the Romanians live here. And then this little part on top of it is the Republic of Moldavia, where Romanian is also a national language. And then, of course, around it, there are small communities of Romanian. So we have some in Bulgaria here, some in, Ser some in Serbia here, a little bit in Hungary here, and a little bit in Ukraine here and around the border with Moldavia. Good. So Romanian, the Romanian we speak today uh, has four dialects, or patru dialecte. So the usual Romanian, the Romanian everyone speaks right now, or most of the people speak right now, is the Daco Romanian or Daco Romuna, which has about 30 million speakers altogether, including first and second language. Native speakers about 18 to 20 million right now, I think. And it's the most common variety of Romanian. It's the most well-known one, and it's the one that has most of the uh, written texts in. But except for that, there are three more dialects which are not really mutually understandable uh, with it. So we have the A-Romanian or A-Romuna, which is spoken by about 250,000 speakers. And then we have the Megleno-Romanian or Megleno-Romuna with about 5,000 speakers. And then Istro-Romanian or Istro-Romuna with about uh, 1,400 speakers. So compared to the 30 million, this is basically nothing. And then talking about Daco Romanian, which is, and I'm just going to refer to it from now as Romanian, uh, it even has some sub dialects, which in Romanian are, are, in Romanian are called Grayuri. These are basically some regional varieties based mainly on phonetic features. They are totally mutually understandable. Uh, maybe we accept some for very specific words. We have some synonyms that might not be very well known. But other than that, they are completely understandable. And uh, they are really hard to quantify and classify the number of them because there are different studies that propose different classifications and different numbers. Uh, 
of them, but the, one of the main studies that most people follow says that there are uh, six sub-dialects of Romanian. So we have Moldavian dialect, which is spoken, of course, in the Republic of Moldova, and also in the Moldavia part of Romania, which is here. And then we have the Banat sub-dialect, which is spoken here on the west side. The Oltenia dialect, which is spoken in the south center part, so we can cover this area here. And then the Muntenia dialect, which is a bit to the west of that, so it's about here. The Krishan dialect, which is this uh, northwest part. And finally, the Maramureshan dialect, which is the very north part of Romania. And this is also probably the most hard to, the most hard to understand. Okay, I'm not going to go again into this either. Hopefully, Vali will cover it. I will just want to show you a uh, sample text of the four dialects. And you can look at them and you can try to see which one seems the closest one, in your opinion, which one is the furthest one compared to the main, uh, to the Daco Romanian. So, this is the Daco Romanian. I can read it. It says, era odată un împărat care nu avea niciun fiu și dorea mult să aibă un fiu ca să nu îi se stingă numele. De aceea se ruga la Dumnezeu să-i dea un fiu. Într-o zi se duse la un vrăjitor să vadă dacă îi va da Domnul un fiu sau nu. Iar acel vrăjitor îi dăte un măr și îi zise, să dai nevesti tale acest măr să-l mănânce și ea va naște un fiu așa cum îți cere inima. So this is the one I can easily read. About the rest... Uh, not sure. Which one do you think is the most similar? I think the Aromanes. This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. Especially the beginning, it looks quite similar. Yeah, this is quite similar. Oh, uh, surprisingly, now actually trying to read through it, uh, they are quite in order. Uh, so, Eastern Romanian is also quite similar. I can probably fluently read this and understand 95% of it. And then this one, indeed, it seems more similar phonetically, uh, even though it, use, it uses some words I would probably not recognize. So here in Romanian, in Romanian is Umparat, and then in Aromanian is Amira. And then Phil, which is Phil in Eastern Romanian, becomes Hilu in Aromanian. So it might be a bit more complicated based on the vocabulary. And then, of course, Magdalena Romanian is the weird one, which I can barely understand or read. Okay, then we're going to the Romanian phonetics. And on the right hand side, you can see the Romanian alphabet. It has 31 letters. And you're probably familiar with most of them. We have five special characters, which are this one, and this one, and this one, and the S with a little thing under, and the T with a little thing under. The rest of them are nothing very special. And we're going to start with the vowels. So just looking at this alphabet, which ones, or how many vowels do you think Romanian has? Eight. Eight. So I assume we considered these three. And then these two. And yeah. E, D, O, and U, right? Yeah. Well, that's correct, except that there are seven. Uh, because this A with a little hat and this I with a little hat are actually the same sound. But oh. yeah, those are the vowels, indeed. So we're going to start with A, which is the normal A, like in Brazilian, Portuguese. Uh, and then E, which is E, like in Brazilian Portuguese, so there is nothing special. I, which is E, O, which is O, and U, which is U. So these are all classic normal sounds, like in Portuguese, like in Spanish, uh, like in Italian. There is nothing uh, weird about them. And then we go to the first weird letter, which is this 
uh, A with a se semicircle on top. And this is similar to the schwa sound in the IPA, so it's pronounced a. Uh. I am not sure if Portuguese has it, Bruno. No, no, no. Okay. So we have like we have a slighter and lower vowel. We have a, uh, which is which the uh, which not u uh, is a. Uh. It is a little bit more open. It's the it is written in IPA with the a upside down. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, we have we have this in the end of words. Well, for example, palavra. Uh, the okay, next I see. A is not palavra. Is palavra, but it's, but okay. it's not sure. Yeah. I think it's quite similar, so I don't think it would be a problem using it in Romanian. Because one more thing about Romanian vowels is since there are, we don't have that many vowels, we don't have such a big vowel inventory, uh, we have quite a lot of allophones. So this is, let's say, an approximate IPA translation, but in, the, in reality, there are a lot of variations for each vowel. So if it's about there, it's probably all right to use it. Okay, and then the last one we're talking about is this A or I with a, well, upside down V on top of it, which is this uh, uh, closed mid vowel, so U, which is similar to the one in Turkish, it's the dotless I, or the one in Russian, uh, again, I think Portuguese doesn't have it. No, but Guarani has it in. <laughs> oh, Guarani has it? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so if any of you speak Guarani, you can you know how to pronounce it. Otherwise, as I said, it's it's found in Turkish, it's found in Russian. Oh it's found in Chinese, in Mandarin, if that helps. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a much closer uh. So it's u. Uh, if anyone wants to give it a try. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's it, actually. Okay, so this is all for the vowels. And then the difference between U uh, with A or with I, uh, which in Romanian it's actually translated as U from A and U from I, so udin a and udin e uh, is that the first one is used in the middle of the word, while the second one is used only in the beginning and in the end. Uh, about fifty to eighty years ago, we only used to have the second one, so the one from i, and then it was a spelling reform, and now it's recommended to use that one only in the beginning and in the end of the word, uh, while the other only in the middle. Nevertheless, there are still quite a lot of people, mainly old people, who only use the latter. And then, since Romanian couldn't just be that easy, and you put uh, the one from I in the beginning and in the end, and that's it. Uh, U from I will not change to the other one if you add prefixes or suffixes to the word. And of course, it's not all prefixes and all suffixes, it's just some of them. So, for example, if you take the word început, which means started, you can make it re început, which means restarted, and you keep it as uh, you keep it from I, and then ne început or not started, and again you keep it from I. So for prefixes is mostly true. For suffixes, it usually goes away. Okay, and then or, well, we can also consider why kind of a vowel, it's pronounced as a vowel in most time, it's really rarely used, it's mostly in borrowed words. Uh, there are no real Romanian words that use Y, it's just those that come from mainly English. Okay, and we're ready to move to consonants. And I'm gonna go really quickly through those because there are, I'm sure there are the same as in Spanish, since Brazilian Portuguese is weird, I'm not sure it sounds the same, so I have to ask someone to confirm. 
So we have ba da fa ha ka la ma na fa ra sa ta va za. Okay, I see nodding, so it's fine. So these are normal consonants. There is nothing weird about them. Just pronounce them the way you normally do. And then we have C and G, which are a bit uh, tricky because they can be pronounced in many different ways. So if C and G is followed, is followed by a vowel, which is, or a consonant, in fact, uh, so anything except for E or I, so E or E, uh, you just pronounce it as K and G, yeah? A valor stop, nothing weird about it. Nevertheless, if it's followed by E or I, they become affricates, so they are pronounced CH and CHI and J and G. Right? So this is the APA. And then if C and G is followed by an age and then E or I, so C H E or C H I or G H E or G H I, uh, they are pronounced as palatal stops. So they are pronounced as Q and G. And that's it for them. And then the letter J is pronounced J. So it's a postal violar uh, fricative. The letter Q is rarely used, uh, again, mostly in borrowed words, and it can be approximated with a CH, so with this one. So also uh, palatal stops. The letter S with a little thing under it uh, is the dental fricative, so it's SH, like in English shop. The letter T, uh, with the letter thing under it is pronounced tsu, so it's a, a dental Africa, uh, an alveolar affricate, like in English cat. And then W is rarely used, again, mostly borrowed words, it is pronounced V. Uh, I don't think there are any borrowings in which you pronounce it as U. And then X uh, can be pronounced either as ksu or gzu. And this depends solely on the word, and you either have to remember it or just you have to give it, like, hope you're lucky. Vlad, uh, how do you call the, the, the small thing under the, the sh and so? In Romanian? Yeah, in, yes. Virgulitsa. Virgulitsa. So, so it's a little comma. It's a little virgula. <laughs> oh, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we finished with all the consonants and vowels, and we're not going yet to combinations of many vowels. Uh, so now let's have a short exercise and see if we can pronounce these words uh, the best. So we're going to start easy. The word for book. Cat. I think. Cat. Yeah, cat. What? Carte. Carte. Correct. Carte. Carte. And then we're going a bit harder. Parachute. Correct. Parachute. Carare. Carare, yep. Cantar. 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 Let's see how you do with many consonants. Optisprezece. Yeah, you can call it Optisprezece, which is also, uh, which is also some people incorrectly write it like, oops, not yellow, uh, which is also some people incorrectly write it like this, incorrectly. Uh, can you try and get rid of this vowel and make it in a single cluster? Optisprezece. Yep, optisprezece. 
so we avoid putting a vowel in between, so we don't call it op tisprezece, but rather we prefer to take a short break between the T and the S. So op tisprezece. It's interesting because in Portuguese we have the opposite tendency. We are getting rid of uh, consonantal encounters, putting vowels like in psychology. Oh, okay. Okay, so you don't like clusters. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, in, in reflex speech, if I were to pronounce it, I just call it obsprezece. So I would get rid of the T somehow, obsprezece. But if you want to pronounce it with nice diction and everything, it's optsprezece. And I think actually it's the, it's the word in Romanian with the most consonants, one after the next. So we have P, T, S, P, R, so it's five consonants, one after another. And then, wait, how can I get rid of, okay. Împucinat. Împu? Împucinat. Nope, it's not a ch. S, S. Yep. Împucinat. Împucinat, yep. Împucinat. And then something quite similar. Putinzo. Yep, Putinzo. Uncheto shot. Yes, Uncheto shot. Yeah, so because C is followed by an E, we pronounce it Che, not Ke. Uncheto shot. I don't think it's that. I heard the one which was correct and the one which was wrong. I said again, but I don't know. No, because you have an age in between, so it's not like above where you have che and j. It has an extra age in between. Gem? Yes, gem. Gem. It, it, it has... It has a similar function with uh, U. In, in Portuguese, when we want to say G, we say we write G U E instead of G H A. Oh yeah, like in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here is not a normal normal G, right? It's a uh, it's palatal consonant. No, in Portuguese we palatalize everything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean if G U A oh, if it's if it's the same as in Spanish, it's still palatal. No. Okay. Kef? Yes, Kef. So as you can see for these words, when, when I pronounce it, I say it Kef and Gem, right? So there is a tendency to add kind of a little I in before the E. So it's not Gem, it's Gem, Kef. Cinematograph. cinematograph. Yes, cinematograph. Artugos. It's not ch. Ch. Artugos. Yes, Artugos. Cercetare. Yes, cercetare. Girlanda. Irlanda. Yes. This went really well. So then I have a secret word which I didn't put on the slides and I really like it. It's such a simple word and people get so scared of it. Oh. Uh, it's a little <laughs> tiny thing like a mouse which looks really cute and it, apparently it's endemic to Romania. Um push. Yes, push. And why do people get it wrong? Uh, because this U sound is quite complicated for most of the people to pronounce, especially mm -hmm. if they're Russian or Turkish. And then also there is a weird consonant and then it's clustered with an R. 
So it's quite it's quite a close sound. You have to pronounce it in a breath, and it's quite a lot of things happening there. Good. Oh, how do I delete it now? <laughs> Ready for the next level? Yay! This yeah. is where it gets interesting. Uh, so if you can see here, all words I've chose, they only have, they don't have any vowel clusters, right? So any two vowels that appear here are separated by at least one consonant. And that was not by mistake. So when you have vowel clusters, if a word contains two or more vowels, they can either form a diphthong or a hiatus, right? So they can either be in the part of the same syllable or they can just be split into two syllables. And the funny thing is that the difference is not marked in any way and it should just be memorized. So you should know how to pronounce it because no one will tell you which one is true. Nevertheless, in the, in the past years, a lot of words containing hiatus, so vowels in two different syllables uh, tend to change in normal speech uh, towards diphthongs. So in order to ease the pronunciation, just remove a syllable and combine them. There, most of them are still incorrect and sound weird. Uh, but some of them are growing on us. And then we have two types of diphthongs, of course, ascending or descending, depending we uh, whether the vowel is first or last in the cluster. And again, you have no way of knowing which one it is. You can just remember that A, ah, U, uh, and U uh, are always vowels. They can't be semi-vowels in Romanian. And then we also have triphthongs, which is three vowels in the same syllable. Well, one vowel and two semi-vowels. And of course, we have clusters of three vowels, which are a diphthong and a hiatus. So we have two in one syllable and one in the other syllable. So it's quite, it's quite a mess. And again, they are not marked in any way. We don't have special markings for the semi-vowel or anything else. And then when che, chi, j, and g appear before another vowel, the role of a and E is solely the formation of the African sound, so you don't pronounce it. Right? So, for example, it's, as Bruno said, it's like G-U-E in, in, uh, in, in Brazilian Portuguese. You don't pronounce the U. It's there just to help form the palatal sound. So, how would you pronounce this? I gave you the APA because I'm nice. Chapa. Yes, chapa. So not che apa. Chapa. Chorba. Yes, chorba. Uh, can you say it again? Chorba. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But I don't know who said it before. I think I heard something. Well, interesting. Let's call it so. Uh, as a chorba. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I thought you used a weird R, which is not rolled. So Romanian R is trilled. Well, rolled, not trilled. So don't be afraid of tr of rolling it. George. Yes, George. So here we have this E, which is not pronounced because it has another vowel after. But here we have this E, which has to be pronounced because it's the only vowel that is. Good. And now the scariest thing of all Romanian phonology is the final I. So it mainly marks the plural of nouns or adjectives and the second person singular uh, in the verb conjugation. That's pretty much the only place you're going to see it. Uh, it's sometimes referred as a non-syllabic vowel, so it's not a vowel per se. Uh, it palatalizes the previous consonant, no matter what it is. So, for example, how would you pronounce these three words? So it's POM for the first one. POMI for the second one, and POMI for the third one. So the middle one is POMI. 
Pome. Can you repeat the second and the last one? Pome. 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 Uh, let me try. Pom, pom, pomi. Uh, Go, Bruno. Pom, pom, pomi. That's it. So, pom, pomi, pomi. Well, it's fine. We have more of them. So these are all the combinations of of final i oh, that can combine with vowels. <laughs> so it's the same sound. It here it just shows all the combinations. So for example, for pi you have rup and rupi, uh, prost, urek, ok, rot, fac, chef, oh. Uh, I don't know what this word means. Base. I have no idea what this is. Oh, mosh. Whoop. Mosh. Vlach. Arabi. Nadejdi. Ung. Merge. Dormi. Bani. Plesovi. Bravi. Brej. Scholi. Sari. Anyone wants to try? I'm still confused with with the difference. <laughs> Trying to understand. So it's a uh... yeah. I don't know how to explain it. So it's not a vowel per se, right? So I don't know if you have this something similar in any non-Russian language that I know of. I so, think it's it, I think it's easier to perceive in in the plosives. For example, rupee. It's different from rupee. Yeah, I, I think the difference from rupee is quite it's quite evident. I think the problem is differentiating between a rup and rupee. Mm, I think for R it might work uh it might it might work better. So it's car and kari. Well, yeah, you have to pronounce it like the Y in Yak, but the problem with Y in Yak is that it's a semi-vowel, which is followed by a vowel, so we can make a diphthong out of it. Here you have a semi-vowel with a consonant in between, so you have to con combine it with a consonant, not, not with a vowel. So let's try maybe the R one, so car. And Kari. Kari and Kari? Not Kari. Not Kari. 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 Yeah, that sounds good. Kar Kari. Kar Kari. Yes, yes. And then let's try with L or oh. let me find the word that only differs by the last I. Mm. So let's say null null. Null, null. Yes, 
That's perfect. Null, null. Okay. And now let's try to go back to pom pom. Ah, probably no. Pom pom pom. I heard two voices at the same time, but combined it sounded well. So pom pom. Uh -huh. Here we can have rup rupi. Uh. Well, here is a funny thing because I is already like C H I is already palatal. The singular and the plural actually is the same. Okay. Any ones you want to try? Um, old, 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 old. I think the first time was better. Old, 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 yeah. Old. Yeah. No, no. Wait, I, no. I think you pronounced the first one like the second one. Old, old, old. No, it, it's only two of them. So it's puts and puts. Puts and puts. No, but the way you pronounce the first one, the first one you said, it's actually the second one. Puts. Yeah, that's the second one. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And how do you pronounce the first one? Puts. Oh, actually, it's like in English. Oops. Puts. Yeah. Okay. And the other one, puts? No. Puts. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> puts. Puts. Okay. But uh, the, the, there is a problem for Brazilians uh, that, uh, for example, T and the they are always palatalized before e and a in Portuguese, but we don't okay. we don't have a mark for that and we don't notice that. For example, we for aunt we say chia, which is written like tia, but we never say tia, unless uh, except in some parts of the country. You say it what chia? Chia. Oh, so you make it an Africa. Yes, uh, we do it a lot without noticing. Okay, I see. Well, then I think we can move on. Or anyone else wants to give it a final try? Now, who wants to read this? Vamos lá, gente. Cada um pega o pedacinho. Okay, I can I can start, but already sorry. <laughs> Brasilia, no, I think it's the same pronunciation. Brasilia. Porto, yeah, Brasilia. Porto. Portuguesa. Portuguesa yes. Brazil. Or or Bra Brazil. It's in Portuguese. You tell me. Okay, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Office of his no official, of yes, official Republica Federa Federativa. Uh, okay. No, don't palatalize no. it. What, what, what is that? Uh, the T, it's a T, it's not a Ch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Brazili Brazilian. Yeah. Okay, that's for me. <laughs> you, well, you can also read the next one because it's in Brazilian. It's in Portuguese. Oh, okay. Republica Federativa do Brasil. 
Yeah, that sounds wrong. Uh, okay. Anyone else wants to continue? I can continue. Yeah, you can skip the numbers. Okay. Este o república federativa formata din numele 27 de, no, de unități federative distritul federal și și 26 de state. Mhm. Mm Țara este împărțită yeah. administrativ în 5.564 de municipii. Corect. În 2008 avea o populație de 189 de milioane 612.814 oh, de locuitori yeah. și o suprafață de 8.511.965 de kilometri pătrați. Ocupăm 47% din teritoriul continentului sud-american. Ok. Can you translate until here? Oh, God. Uh, you can translate it in Portuguese, Bruno can confirm. Yes, to Portuguese. Hmm. É a República Federativa formada Sim. por 27 unidades federativas, Distrito Federal e 26 estados. Uhum. É... Não faço ideia do que é a primeira parte. What, what is Tara? No, Tara is the Yeah. What do you think that means? Okay. É, administrativa em 5.564 municípios. Mas o que, que você acha que significa Tara é este impartido? Ah, é... Impartida. Ele é dividido em? Sim, o que você acha que significa Tsara? Eita, espera. Este é um pronome demonstrativo, talvez? Não. O oh, God. Não, a Romênia é uma língua romana, então os, os pronomes são todos parecidos. Mas se é uma palavra diferente do português, deve ser um substantivo. Aí? Hum. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. Literalmente o país é dividido. Em 2008. Uh, does Romanian have like uh, articles? Yep. But the definite article is placed. The definite article is placed after the noun and combined with the noun. Oh. <laughs> That's why you don't see the, the indefinite one. You can see it here. It's O for feminine and is un, uh, which I can't see, around uh, for masculine. Yeah, no, I, I don't see it. Okay, who wants to continue? Oh, you haven't finished translating. You got here. Right, right. In 2008, havia uma população de 189.612.814 moradores, habitantes. 
É... Distribuídos, talvez, distribuídos. Em 8.511.965 km quadrados, ocupando 47% do território continental sul-americano. É, Pera aí, cê, cê, depois de habitantes, cê, o que você falou? Eu perdi essa parte. Depois de habitantes, eu supus que seja distribuídos. Não, mas é uma palavra eu, eu que tenho, é parecida em português. Tem o E, né? Uhum. Que é o, o sim. Isso. Aí o artigo indefinido, uma. E uma. É... Área? Superfície. Isso. Ah. Nossa. Okay, so we also have a special guest who just signed up. So, Zed, do you want to present yourself? Da, in ce limba să mă prezint? Alege tu. O să mă prezint în română. No, no. Okay, eu sunt Zed, eu sunt brazilian, eu sunt în Brazilia, eu locuiesc în sudul țării, am fost deja în România de patru ocazii. Uh, iubesc această limbă și cultură generală a României. E isso, galera. Ok, now try in Portuguese so people can understand you. Entendo. Alguém entendeu o que eu falei? Não. De cultura. Então, gente, eu sou brasileiro, conheci o Vlad na Romênia, num projeto onde eu fui trabalhar na Romênia, em Bucareste, em 2016. Sempre fui curioso por esse país, sempre tive interesse, e ele me convidou a participar dessa reunião. Aqui estou, aí de paraquedas. E achei muito legal ver vocês lendo e adivinhando esse texto em romeno. Acho que está todo mundo indo muito bem. Tu falou em algum <risos> momento há quatro anos atrás? Uma coisa assim? Uh... Não tenho quatro... certeza. Quatro vezes você quatro falou? Vezes, quatro vezes, alguma coisa. É, eu estive na Romênia quatro vezes. Ah... Porque... Em 2016, eu voltei a fazer intercâmbio pela Europa e voltei para Transilvânia. Adoro conhecer aquele país, visitar a Transilvânia, enfim. Foi isso que eu disse, quatro vezes, exatamente. E ele também fala inglês romano. A primeira vez que eu conheci ele, ele falou para mim romano, e eu estava confuso, porque ele soou perfeitamente correto e um pouco estranho. Mas eu não acreditei por um segundo que ele era um foreigner. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Well, some people thought I was uh, from Moldova. Yeah. Because of my accent. A suposição normal quando alguém fala romeno de jeito estranho é que é da Moldova. Uh-huh, por causa do sotaque. Sim. And what other languages do you speak now, Zé? Uh, I ha I'm trying to master Polish, but it's really difficult. There are three genders. It's always hard to remember. Romania, Romanian has three genders as well. Yeah, but it's yeah. way much easier because it's Latin, right? Yeah. Uh, I am trying to study Russian. I can see a, some connection between Russian and Romanian, which is, I think this is the most interesting thing about Romanian. It is a it is Latin, it is pure Latin, but it is also a mix of Slavic languages, Hungarian. So I think Romanian is unique. That's what I can say about Romanian. Okay, and I think everyone has a curiosity now. Can you pronounce this? Pom, pom, pomi. Well, he can do it. <laughs> okay, well, let's continue for a bit more. I'm gonna skip this paragraph because we're kind of running out of time. We're gonna go to things a bit more interesting. And let's see who wants to give it a try.
bucurete cum s-a bucurat bucuroaia de bucurie bucurie lui bucurea când când s-a întors bucuros de la București București Can you say it faster now? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. Um, prin vulturi, vântul viu vuia. Prin vulturi, vântul viu vuia. Prin vulturi, vântul viu vuia. Yeah, you still don't like this final I, but that's all right. What? What? We don't like this final I here. You still pronounce it as vulturi instead of vulturi. Vulturi. Okay. Yeah. Stanca, stun, castan, castan. Yeah. This is more complex. Chaze sachi and chaze sachi. Chaze sachi and chaze sachi. This is it. No, sorry. Chase. Chase. Ah, okay. Chase sachi and chase sachi. É o casa suja, chão sujo dos romenos. Bruno, want to try? Mm -hmm. uh, chasse sash and chasse sach. Oh, come on, you can do it faster. <laughs> chasse sash and chasse sach. Yep. Zeg, like I'm not asking, do I have another one for you? <laughs> this is a really common sentence because it's formed just from vowels. Oh my god. <laughs> Gente, essa eu sei porque eu aprendi lá. Why ya 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 ye ye wo yao. Try again. Oh my god. Why ya 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 ye ye wo yao. Try again. Yeah. Why ya 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 ye ye wo yao. You're missing this a. And now you're muted. Why ya 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 ye ye wo yao. What happened with this A? Ah, why are you yeah 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 yeah? No. Bitch, no steal. Why are I yeah 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 yeah? Why are you yeah 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 yeah? Why are you yeah 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 yeah? Vlad, I have I have I have a question. Um, eu is eu and not eu. Yes. It's eu. You mm -hmm. put a, a, a an i glide in front of it. On every e. At the uh, start. Not everything, but at least for yeah, which means i, and for yes, which means is. Oh, yeah. uh, you mm -hmm. do it. So uh, in the beginning is oia aia e a e, and not oia aia e. A yay. Yes, why a a a ye a ye. Ye a ye. Yes. Wow. It's not there, but it's there. Why a a a ye a ye eu yo yao. Yep. A tradução literal é a ovelha aquela é dela. Eu a levo. Why a a ye 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 ye.
Next. Um, what do you do when you, you have the, oh, I forgot the name in English, hyphen? How do you say hyphen? Hyphen. Hyphen? Oh, you um, ignore it. You just assume it's the same word. Okay. Uh, un vulture start the piece con fix no it's not fix fix how yeah. how do I know if it's fix or the other um the other or pigs I think it was pigs or something you don't oh okay <laughs> but but normally when you when you pronounce it you're, you're gonna see it sounds a bit weird if you pronounce it one way or the other so right okay. now you chose to pronounce it as pigs which is correct okay un vulture stepe pisc un pix in plisc yep un vulture stepe pisc un pix in plisc pix uh it's a pen yes então pessoal já sabemos o que significa pix ó aí a nova tecnologia no, it's it's pen, but but it's it's not it's not the fountain pen, it's like the normal pen. Fountain pen, what? Zeg or Bruno? Difference between the stylo she picks. Ah, no steel. Picks is a caneta normal, gente, a caneta regular, e não a pena. Entende? É isso que ele está dizendo. Picks é caneta. Bolígrafo. Ah, okay. Mas, mas ah. se usa estilou para isso também ou não? Estilou? Sim, não. Se usa. Uh, você falou se assim, estilou, não, Vlad? Uh, Pentru estilou. Estilou. Em francês, não? Asta não é estilou? Ah, asta é um estilou. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh. E um pix é o um regular, não? E um pix, yeah, it's the weird stuff. It's the classic stuff. Any kind of classic stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. You you are seeing this uh, this first pix uh, right there. <laughs> you are seeing it. This. Yeah, the first one. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is the new technology which is being used in Brazil to do bank transfers, money transfers. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not that one. It's called pix. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> So now basically you know everything that doesn't have that is a pix. Like pix is the fancy one that you have to have ink and fill it in and write nicely. Pecap un capac, pecapacunac. Yep. Pecap un capac, pecapacunac. We're going, we're turning it up a notch. Mm. E pestrița, prepelița pestrița, dar mai pestrița sunt puii prepeliței pestrițe. P virguliță is ta, ce. So, right? Yeah. It's it it's called uh T virgulitza or T virgulitza or it's called two. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. if you if you if you want to make someone aware that he's that it's missing just the bottom part, you say you're missing the virgulitza. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just called t. Yeah. It's a letter. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. It's just in, in, in Portuguese we, we have uh, the letter C uh, with the little thingy uh, yeah. uh, beneath, and we don't call it uh, another thing. We, we call it C C C Cedilha. Oh, yeah, because you have an, because you have another C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And because the sound is the same as uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like what? What's the purpose of having two different letters pronounced the same? Oh, <laughs> well, we could call uh, Cecilia Sa. 
No, but, but at some point in the past, Cecilia was pronounced either as Tsa or Cha in the past. Oh, really? Yes, in Ga Old maybe. Galician. Yes, we lost okay. it. Uh, but actually, in nowadays Galician, they used to use that sound. Oh, okay. Okay. So who wants to give this one a try? And then it's going to be one more, and I think we're probably done. Okay, but not as fast. <laughs> Very good. Want to try faster? Okay. Epestrice pepelice. Epestrice pepelice. Epestrice pepelice. Epestrice darma epestrice. Sun pui pepelice. Epestrice. Nice. Okay, and let's finish with the Pearl version, which I'm gonna ask Zach to pronounce for, to read first. Let's see. But drag. Kosashu Sasha can koseste, could Sasha Sash Sasu koseste, Shin Sus, Shin Jos de Casa Sasu koseste, Sasu Shin Shosia. She shall say Cassis Sashashi Stee, Chesha, Shasa Spushi Shish. Nope, you have three mistakes. Oh, okay. You missed Shasse and Sasha. <laughs> Which Shasse? First Shasse. Ah, okay. It's pretty difficult. Kosashul Sasha kun koseste, kut shasse sash sasul koseste, shin sus shin jos de kasa sa koseste sasul shin shosea. Shin shasse kase sasha stie, che shansa sasha spuse siege. So difficult. Oh, come on, it, it sounds like normal Brazilian. You like to sh 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 everything. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, what about the one that's Teatra Capra and Patru? Oh, that's boring. Oh, come on, why is it boring? <laughs> There's nothing interesting. Well, it's difficult. Here you go. Capra calca pietra, pietra crapa in patru. Crapar ar capul capri cum a crapat pietra in patru. So who wants to try either or both? Uh, the, the beginning of the second sentence, you pronounce yeah. capra. Capra. Capra? No, in the beginning of the second sentence. Oh, Kraparar. Oh, Kraparar? Kraparar. Kraparar, okay. It actually comes from here. And then you invert it and it's normally like this, but then you have two vowels and then you add an extra R. Uh, but nobody speaks that way, right? It, it, well, it is because it's kind of a different mood. Yeah, it's uh, conditional, but nobody speaks that in spoken language. Nobody speaks it but that the, way. The first, one, the first one is indeed conditional, the second one Officially speaking, is an inverted com uh, conditional, but it has another meaning. Actually, it's kind of like a, in, in English, you translate it as "may it be." Okay. It's like "dute acolo" or uh, well, it's yeah, it's mostly in, in interjections, and okay, most most of them is not suitable to pronounce now with now with children around. You know, sometimes in Portuguese we also invert words. It happens but also in Portuguese. What I mean is that if you say here, if you replace krapara by ar by ar the meaning is different. Okay. 
So Krapara is like, it's, well, it's sort of like a third person imperative kind of. So I, I, think, I think the best approximation is a third person imperative. No, you don't mm -hmm. agree, Brilla, or you don't? No, no, I'm neutral. It's not neutral. <laughs> uh, um, Sensatia e neutra. I think this, this reference doesn't work. What? <laughs> the, there is a meme in Portuguese. When, when a guy says a sensação é neutra. In, 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 in Romana, uh, a bit sensatia, no? Sensatia. Mm -hmm. Sensatia. No. Sensatia é neutra. Ah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't use sensatia in this. Ah. I don't know why. <laughs> It's, it sounds weird. <laughs> so the, no. the, the one of the hardest thing about Romanian is that we have a lot of synonyms uh, for a lot of words. And while most dictionaries and actually most people would say that they mean the same thing, uh, some of them really sound weird in some contexts. And without any explanation, I mean, it just sounds <laughs> weird. Yes, you always have a Slavic word for a Latin word, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think always. I think you do. For example, uh, that word that we were discussing the other day, slujba, that's not Latin at all, slujba. And there's a yeah. word in Latin for that. But we, but we don't have a Latin correspondence. And you have a word in Romanian for that, in Hungarian, munka. That's, that's Hungarian, that's not even Slavic. But it doesn't mean we also have a Latin correspondent which we refuse to use. Okay, but it's pretty much the same. Right? It's about job. Well, it, it's not like we have an option. We use that because it's the only one we have. Well, but it's still, it's example, a lot of... We, we, have, we have a choice. We have many choices for love. And we choose to use the Russian one. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It sounds cuter. If, if you use, like, Amor, it sounds so weird. Almost grow. But yeah, I think it's time to end here. I don't know. I think it's quite late for you already, or Arthur? We can go about, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like that. Okay. Well, then let's have some fun. If I can. Whoops, sorry. Let's make a quick problem. So we have some verbs here. It's the present tense, first, second, third, uh, singular and plural. And can you guess the meaning of the verbs? Let's see, first of all. To sing. Yes, to sing. To fly. fly. Yep, to fly. And then? To hear. To yeah. Entrever. Mm -hmm. Conversar. Quase. Perto. Tá perto. Tá quente. Ah, per tá perguntar. Hum. Uma entrevista é isso, num certo sentido. Yeah, this is probably <laughs> Slavic origin. No, I think it's the same, same route as entrevista. But uh, let's go in the meantime. The next one, yeah, yeah, and next. Yeah, it comes from in the letter, from interrogare. Interrogare. Uh, 
Cerro de área. Ok, uh, next one. Ayeshi. Ashar. I don't know. I think this is not Latin. Here? It is because in Italian they say the same. They say uscire. Ah. True. It comes from Latin exire. From Italy and the English word comes as well. Sair. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's because Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. This is certainly Latin. July. July. Next. Yes, sir. To pray. To what? To pray. Mm, not to drink. No. No. This is a bit tricky. Is not to pray. Is not to pray. Trainer. Rehearse. Nope. There is nothing to do with redoing something. Volta. Is it related to the Yeshi? Pina. I mean, it comes from Ayeshi, which means to go out with Re, but it's the meaning is not related to that. To come back? No. Going. No. It's it's not relating to persons moving in any way. Destacar. I don't know what it is. Highlight. What? To highlight. You're getting close. It's so like to stand out. Yeah, something like that. More like to result or to to result from something. So it, it would be like French ressortir. Yeah, that's exactly where it comes from, actually. To accomplish. Okay. Yeah, I, I just checked the etymology and it comes from, from French. But don't you have the verb réussi? But, uh, Reushi with you. Yeah. Yeah. Reushi, which means to succeed. Okay. Uh, next, Aruga. Yes. Yes. Okay, and next. I say to, yeah. to wait. Yep. To, to wait. Yeah. Yep, it's similar to the Italian one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so normally, I, in terms of vocabulary, Italian is the closest thing to to Romanian, and that's why normally when we try to speak Italian, we just pronounce Romanian words with a bit of funny tone, and we hope they are gonna understand. The and... pronunciation is very similar. Yeah. yeah. And that's why for us, it's really easy to understand Italian, especially in writing, but even in speaking, if they speak slowly. Nevertheless, if we start putting in some Slavic words, they're going to be lost, which is funny. No. Okay, so now let's see how to how to actually solve it. So is there anything that comes out when you look at it, like some first thoughts or anything? I would say on the second line, uh, the third the third uh, block is zbori. Yeah. 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 Correct. Oops. 
But you don't pronounce the I, right? It's no, but the, the, uh, the consonant. Yeah, we tried going so that it doesn't work. If you have a better way to explaining it. Pessoal, uh, a, a consoante que precede o I final em romeno nunca ela é muito pronunciada. Ela, ela é palatizada. Então, em vez de dizer tus bori, uh, a gente tem que dizer tus bori. É um R bem leve. Não é, é um R pela metade. I mean, the theory is simple. It's a practice that kills them. No, it's not hard at all. Tus bori. Tus bori. A gente teve uma sessão de sofrimento com isso agora. Não, não é, não é difícil. Olha, tua use, em vez de falar tua use, para, palatiza o Z, espreme a língua na tua boca. Tua use, prende a língua, tua use. A mesma coisa no B, tu entregue. Fica bem leve o som da consoante. Ela fica pronunciada pela metade. Alguém quer tentar? Tu cante, tem que tem que palatizar a língua não tem que pronunciar a consoante tu esboi tu entrebe I mean if if anyone manages now to pronounce this final I I would consider it my utmost accomplishment it's like you don't need to learn anything else just learn how to read and if you pronounce that I probably everyone will assume you're actually Romanian <sighs> Um, let me see. Um, Mergi? No, it's not Mergi. Mergi? Yeah. Yeah, Mergi. No, it's G. I don't know what I, what I got wrong. I Med. thought before an I, a G would become B. No, that with an age in between. Mm, okay. So, Meriji? Well, the consonant is correct. The final I still doesn't. Meriji? <coughs> Não se fala o I final. O I final é mudo. A pronúncia para na but, consoante. But then, how can you uh, differentiate? Uh, how can you. <laughs> Como que a gente diferencia isso de simplesmente não pronunciar nenhuma... Ó, oh, merit, merit. Não fala merdi, merit. Uh, dorme, merit. dorme. Pronuncia o M, não fala o I, dorme. Mas, mas eu, acho que, eu acho que no caso do merit e do, e do fat, não tem, não tem a versão sem o I, porque o tchã e o dja já são palavras. Já são palavras. É, mas igualmente não se fala o I, fat, se fala ah, fat. Sim, sim. Fat. Fat. Não fala o I inteiramente. Nesse sentido é diferente do italiano. O fat. Sim, o italiano, italiano sempre se fala o I. O italiano é bem marcado o I. Uh -huh. Mas isso eu acho que é influência. I think this is influ influence of uh, Slavic languages, Vlad, because this happens in Russian. Oh, it's clearly the soft sign of Russian. Yeah, it's the soft sign, yes. Yeah. Maybe not Russian, maybe Bulgarian. Slavic. Yeah, Slavic. Most likely Russian, though. Yeah. Tá, mas acho que tá meio que acabando nosso tempo. Uh, mm -hmm. Vocês querem fazer alguma pergunta? Sim. E a gente vai ter uma segunda oficina com de Romeno, com a Valentina. Do, uh, Vlad, do you want to give uh, a spoiler about what Valentina will talk to them? Nope. <laughs> and, and I have really strong reasons for it. 